Hi guys, in this video, this is the second video, same exact shape, different method. It's called the subtraction method. We want to find the centroid, the center of gravity, center of mass, whatever you want to refer to it as for our class. It's all the same right now. Uh, we want to find the centroid of this particular shape. We're going to take a different approach this time. So again, six units wide, six units tall, except this time, instead of looking at it like we did last time as a rectangle and a square and a triangle, and we added things up, we're going to instead look at it this way. I'm going to view this as a square with the corner lopped off. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to treat it as if that square actually existed and then I'm going to subtract away the triangular piece. And we're going to do the same thing that we did last time. So for instance, if this is a square, right, let's call the square area one, okay? In fact, I'll just call it the area of the square, okay? When I look at the centroid, the centroid for that square is really, really simple. It's halfway over, which is three, and halfway up, which is three. And when I look at the area of the triangle, okay, now, forget this, ready? We're actually looking at the white area there. There's my triangle, right? Okay. When I look at the area of the triangle and I'm trying to figure out where the centroid is, I know that if I break this into thirds, right, we go a third of the way over and a third of the way up, okay? Do I have an x coordinate of four, five, or six, and a y coordinate of four, five, or six, right? And the centroid is located one third of the way from the base. Well, the base this time, because of the way it's directed, right, more of it, the shape is up than it is down. Right? So it should be weighted upward. That means it's going to be at this five line. And then as far as left to right, more of the, of the triangle, more of the mass of this white area would be to the right than it would be to the left. So it's going to be right here at the five line. Right, And so it turns out that the centroid for this little triangular shape is right there, a third of the way from this direction and a third of the way down instead. The centroid is at five, five. Now, 3 and 5 are very easy to average. The x coordinates 3 and 5 would average out to 4, 3 and 5 would average out to 4. But I know last time I got an answer 2.71, so what's the deal? And it turns out the reason that, um, that I, I can't do this is because the square is so much bigger than the triangle, right? And so I need to take into account that these things have areas and I need to work with that, okay? So then what I'm going to do then is I'm gonna take the area of each shape. And the area of the square, it's a six by six square, so the area is 36. As far as the triangles go, it's one half base times height. The triangle, the white area, has a base of three and a height of three. Three times three is nine, and half of that is 4.5, okay? Now, here's the kicker, ready? I actually took the area of the triangle away. So I call it the method of subtraction because I'm actually going to consider that to be a negative area. It's an area that I'm removing. The reason this makes a difference is when I go do the weighted x over the total area, just like I did in the last video. And if you don't know what I'm doing right now, you need to go watch that last video, okay? The weighted x would be x coordinates, ready? Three, but it has a weight of 36. plus five, but it has a weighted area of negative 4.5. The total area of the shape would be 36 minus 4.5, which is 31.5, which is the same area that we got last time, so we know we're on the right track. Now, let's go through and do some multiplication, right? Three times 36 is 108. And five times 4.5 is 22.5, but it's negative this time. Because it's a subtracted area that we're removing, right? And if I take 108 and subtract 22.5, I end up with 85.5. Well, that sounds like a familiar number if you just watched the other video, because I know when I divide that by 31.5, I get 2.71. Now, as far as the y's go, I repeat the same process, but I'm gonna point out something to you, ready? I'm gonna end up with the y's going three times 36 and five times a negative 4.5. I'm gonna divide it by 36 minus 4.5. You're gonna get the exact same number, right? 
because they have the same x coordinates as y, same x as y, and the same areas. So that means that your y is going to be 2.71 as well. And it's easy to see this time, whereas with the method of addition, you couldn't see that, right? And so the centroid for the shape, again, 2.71 would be about right there and about right here. So your, your overall centroid for the shape is going to be just slightly left and below the original if it was just the square, right? So if it was just a square, it would be right here. And when I knocked off some of the, sorry, when it was originally a square, the center would have been at 3, 3. But now I knocked off some weight, which means that now it's centered more towards the left and more down than it originally was. So that makes sense, right? Everything makes sense. And so I write these as x, y coordinates then. My answer is going to be in the form 2.71, 2.71, and I'm done. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, subtraction, I think, in this particular problem is a lot easier. But there will be times when you have to use subtraction. The big difference was right here, right? You had a negative area, and that negative sign showed up right here in the formula. So hopefully you're ready to go then. Um, that that might have been overkill. We don't do that many complex shapes in this class, but you at least know what you're doing.